Hello and welcome. I'm going to give you a brief overview of aspects of atmospheric science that are relevant to the Tenerife field trip. We will learn more as the week goes on, but for now, I'll set the scene and whet your appetite for what's to come. Firstly, let's consider the global atmospheric circulation. As you will know, the atmosphere organizes into these large scale patterns with circulation cells, such as the Hadley cell, shown here and here, and also the mid latitude cells and the polar cells. At the equator, we have the intertropical convergence zone, shown here, which is where we have strong solar heating and that leads to an unstable atmosphere and lots of convection. This air, as it rises at the equator, must go somewhere, and so it travels north and south, and eventually it descends at around about 30 degrees north and 30 degrees south. At the high altitudes, air is cold and dry, and as the air descends, it warms adiabatically. And because it's descending, this also creates high pressure at the surface. So that's denoted by these H's here. In the Northern Hemisphere, high pressure leads to a clockwise circulation known as an anticyclone. The high pressure that influences Tenerife is known as the Azores High. And this leads to northeasterly flow at Tenerife, shown here. So air comes from the northeast. Here is a weather chart from 2011 showing the Azores High here, with Tenerife and the Canaries here. And as I mentioned, the air rotates clockwise around an anticyclone. So that means that the direction of the wind at Tenerife is from the northeast. So here's the Azores High, it's over the North Atlantic, and this is from 2011. At the moment, the Azores High is further to the west of Tenerife, and we can see this high pressure ridge here. It's not as distinct as shown in the previous weather chart. What we can also see here are some clouds at the location of Tenerife. So that's the current weather situation today, which is the 28th of April. Clouds are an important part of the hydrology on Tenerife. If air descends from high up and is dry, how do we get clouds? Because if the air is dry, Surely we need the air to be moist to form clouds. Well, we also observe a so-called temperature inversion. And I'll explain what that means here. So this is a plot of height against the temperature in the atmosphere. And this is over Tenerife, so it's a plot in the vertical. And... The temperature inversion marks the boundary between air descending in the descending branch of the Hadley cell and air rising up from the surface. There can be strong vertical fluxes of heat and moisture from the ocean that are carried up by the air currents. This creates turbulent mixing and we see that in the lower layers, up until about 1 or 1 1.5 kilometers, the temperature of the air decreases at a very specific rate. It decreases by 10 degrees Celsius for every kilometer that you rise in the atmosphere. This is known as the adiabatic lapse rate. However, the descending air above the inversion warms as it approaches the surface. So it starts off cold and it warms as it approaches the surface. This descending air meets the air from below 
as I mentioned, it meets at around about 1 or 1 1.5 kilometers altitude approximately. And as the air above the inversion is warmer than the air below, it means that the turbulent fluxes cannot rise any further than this temperature inversion. Why is that? Remember that warm air rises and also cold air sinks. So if this air rises, it will find itself colder than the surrounding air. And in that case, it will become more dense than its surroundings and sink. So this temperature inversion acts as a cap to any convection. If the inversion wasn't there in this situation, then air would keep on rising and cooling and we would have very deep clouds and likely quite a lot of precipitation. The inversion layer stops the cloud from becoming too deep. We only get clouds if the humidity is high enough by the time the air has risen to the inversion height. The influence that the inversion has on clouds has shaped vegetation zones on the island of Tenerife. And that's something you'll see throughout the field trip. The next slide shows an image of Tenerife from above, surrounded by very thin stratocumulus clouds. These are stratocumulus layer clouds. There are no clouds over the mountain. Why is that? This is because, in this case, the mountain actually extends into the inversion layer where there are no clouds. Depending on the strength of the inversion and the horizontal wind speed, which is driven by the Azores High and the trade winds, the mountain can actually lift the inversion layer. It can lift it to higher altitudes in the atmosphere and this can lead to the clouds deepening, whereas otherwise they wouldn't. When this happens, the clouds can deepen in the vertical and they can precipitate more rain. They can also precipitate snow in some cases too. So I'll move on to the next slide. The bottom right, this picture here, shows a climatology of the precipitation on the islands and we see that it's highest to the northeast. This is where the air comes from. It comes from the northeast and it's driven, the air is driven up the slopes and because of that the clouds can deepen and precipitate. Once rain has fallen due to this, these clouds deepening, when the clouds go over the mountain and on the other side, they will have much less water in them and will be far less likely to rain. The bottom left shows that the wind patterns can be complex and this is due to the 3D shape of the islands. And it can lead to, you can see these vortices that are shedding off the islands. These can be seen from satellite. In some cases, there is evidence of wind storms and even tornadoes that can rip up trees and vegetation over the islands. Another huge influence is the Sahara. Easterly winds whip up dust from the Sahara, which is transported to the west across the Atlantic Ocean to the Americas. Dust has minerals which are vital for fertilizing plants, but they are also important in the atmosphere. They can form ice nucleating particles in the atmosphere. These are special particles that are needed to initiate ice crystals within clouds. Ice crystals are needed to initiate snowfall in clouds as well. These mineral particles have been measured at Isana using mass spectra. The particles are rich in elements like sodium, aluminium, calcium, potassium and other elements 
In addition, aerosol particles have been measured to consist of chloride and other sulfate species, as well as silicon. The dust from the Sahara is very distinct in the atmosphere. In the day, it can look like a smoke layer, has a bluey tinge, but it can also result in beautiful red sunsets, as shown here in the bottom left. As previously mentioned, we can have snowfall on Tenerife. This tends to happen in February, but it can happen later, towards the end of March, and even into April in some extreme cases. Whether this is due to ice formation on dust particles from the Sahara, or due to clouds deepening due to the terrain of Tenerife, or a combination of both of these factors, is not clear. You will learn more about this during the module. Okay, thank you for listening. If you found the video useful, don't forget to give us a like. See you next time.